Raise up our hands and praise the King of Kings this morning. Come on, how many are ready to lift up our hands and worship our King of Kings this morning? Come on, how many came with an expectation this morning? How many came to receive this morning? Come on, let's lift up our hands. On behalf of Pastor Manuel and Laura Sosela, we want to welcome you to Living Word of Chino Hills. We want to welcome those that are streaming. Let me tell you, if you're streaming this right now, we ask that you share it because someone is going to receive what's going to happen here this morning. How many are coming for an excitement this morning? Come on. Lord, we thank you this morning for what you're about to do, my God. We thank you for your sons and daughters that are here this morning, my God, that you were able to wake them up this morning and put a new song in their heart to come here this morning, my God, that they be ready to receive, my God, that they leave here victorious, my God, not a victim, my God, that they leave here triumphant, my God, not with a trial, my God, that you continue to do your work in them, my God. I ask that you usher in your presence, my God, here this morning as we lift up our hands and praise you this morning, my God. We love you, we praise you, and we honor you this morning and everyone here in Living Word of Gino Hill said, amen and amen. Come on, we came ready to praise the King of Kings this morning. Just give him a shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. And there is no rival that could ever stand against your mind you've always been with us yes you have every battle you've already won we've already won come on no weapon there is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you and there is no army to conquer truth you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've already won Ooh, show me show me one thing he can't do. show me a mountain he can't move. he's the god of the breakthrough anything is possible come on he's the god of the impossible Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can't part. He's the God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible. Oh, 
Breaking. 
You're mighty. You can do anything. You're great. You're mighty. You can do anything. You're great. You're mighty. You can do anything. You're great. Come on, we serve a God that is victorious. Come on, he deserves praise this morning. He is victorious. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We lift you up, God. Thank you, Jesus.
Sunday, can you put your hands together and give them praise? As we return back to our seat, go ahead and uh, high five your neighbor, high five the person sitting behind you. Tell them, get ready for the word of God this morning. Well, God has a special service for you this morning. We praise Jesus in this place. How many of you praise Jesus in this place? But with that being said, let's look up at the screen for a few announcements. We hope you enjoyed the worship part of our service. We're excited to see you. God has a powerful word for you. But before all that, here are some brief announcements. Hey, Woman of God, join us every Monday from 6 to 7 p.m. for our Women's Bible Study, Women Who Met Jesus. You don't want to miss it. Hope to see you there. Join us this Friday for our Young Adults Bible Study. There will be food, worship, and the Word, so come out because God is going to speak to you. Be sure to invite someone out and hope to see you there. 
we'd also like to invite all youth to the Fearless Gen Youth Service every Friday night at 7 p.m. There's food, word, worship, and you don't want to miss it, so I'll see you there. Unfortunately, due to inclement weather, we'll be canceling our Friday night Easter service and our Saturday Easter picnic. We'll still be having church on Sunday, so we'll see you there. Don't forget our service times. Wednesday night, 6 o'clock for prayer and 7 o'clock for service. And Sunday morning, doors open at 9.30 for prayer and 10.30 for service. See, See you, you there. there. We hope you're excited about our recent events. And if you'd like to be involved, please visit our resource center. Also, if you're new here, stop by the information center to pick up your free gift. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless. Come on, church. Give it up to Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's nothing more awesome than to have a whole church just praising the Lord. Amen. Everybody lifting up their voices. Amen. But I have one more announcement. As always, cell phones. If you haven't dealt with your cell phone yet, take the time right now. Make sure it's on vibrate, silent. I know a lot of us use them to take notes. Uh, you're going live, but please deal with the volumes right now. We know how disruptive it can be for somebody's little uh, tune to go off and everybody start looking around. So, Please uh, deal with the volumes. But with that said, you know what time it is. Come on, let's get excited. It's our time to get back to the Lord. Come on, church. Amen. It's not time to get quiet now. But we've made it very easy to give here at Living Word to Chino Hills. And as you come through the front door there at the Resource Center, there's always a basket or a tray of tithe and offering envelopes. But if you didn't pick one up and you're in need of an offering envelope, please raise your hands up high. Keep them up high, and our greeters will gladly bring you an envelope. Amen to those hands. I see some up front. If you're writing a check this morning, please write it out to Chino Hills Foursquare, or CHF, and it'll get deposited correctly. Also, if you'd like to give by debit card or credit card, please take an envelope. Besides the information you find in on the front of the envelope, inside you'll find a piece of paper. If you could fill it out clearly, completely, put your cell phone number on there in case they got to get a hold of you. Don't forget the security code. And you can rest assured that all the transaction slips are destroyed as they take place. But the easiest and most convenient, probably the most secure way to give is on your phones. Most of us have a smartphone these days. And if you do, you probably have a banking app. And most banks and credit unions offer Zelle. It's very simple to sign up if you've never used it. It's very simple to give to the church. If you've never used it before, you can find the church at the email address, ch4square at yahoo.com. Once it's there, it stays there, and hopefully it'll always be in your top five. This morning scripture, I'm going to read from the book of Psalms, Psalm 13, verses 1 and 2. And this morning, I'm reading from the New International Version. That's the NIV, Psalms 13, verses 1 and 2. And the word of the Lord says, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemies triumph over me? And the ushers can make their way up. And the word I want to talk about this morning is the word how. It was hard to get a, a good definition on this word, but the dictionary said it's a word used to ask the condition or the quality of something. It is often posed as a question. And how many times do we use how during the day? You know, we tell people, hey, how are you going? How are things with you? How's the family? You know, and a lot of times we turn it and we ask about ourselves. You know, it's how did I get in this mess? How long till vacation? How long till the food's ready? You know, and, and a lot of times we turn that word not just as a informal greeting, but, you know, as, as a cry to ourselves. Here in the scripture, David is crying out to the God. And how often do we find ourselves crying the same prayer? How long, Lord? How long are things are coming against me? How long, Lord, till I see your face? You know, but I'm going to take this into our tithe and our offering. You know, a lot of times we do use this scripture and, and the word how to, to cry out to God and ask for relief or a blessing or this. But how often do we use that word how to ask, how God can I serve you? How, lo how long, Lord God, till I can come before your presence, you know? And, and with our tithe and our offering, we, we use that word, you know, Lord, I would, I'd like to give, but I just don't have the means right now. I, I, I don't know how long, Lord God, I can be in this predicament. How, Lord God, can I finally come before you? 
But, you know, we can serve the Lord by coming before him and say, how, Lord God, can you use me in this house? And we, and that, we can always serve the Lord in our tithes and our offerings. You know, it doesn't ma matter whether you're, you're giving $1,000, $100, $10, or even maybe all it is is $1, but it's how we come before the Lord with, with a good heart, that our hearts turn towards him and that we can seek him with all our hearts and all our minds and just say, Lord, use me today, not how, but just use me, Lord. And with that said, we'll just bow our heads and we'll get ready to take up our tithe and our offering. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord God. And we first, Lord, as always, Lord God, I want to thank you for your presence in the house, Lord God. And as we come before you with our tithe and our offering, Lord God, I just pray, Lord God, that you use us all today, Lord God, that you show us, Lord God, the things that you have for us, Lord God, and let this prayer, Lord, be a time for us to seek you, Lord God, and not just how you will deliver us, Lord God, but how we can come before you. We pray a blessing on the givers this morning, Lord God, and for those who don't have the means to give, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that you will provide for the next time, Lord God. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We give you the glory, Lord. And in Jesus' name, the church said, amen and amen. Come on, let's get excited. It's our time to give back to the Lord. God bless you as you give. Sabedra family, come on up. And we just want to cover them in prayer. Amen. Praise God. And I'm going to need some uh, help, help uh, praying James, Andrew, and these guys. Come on over here. We're going to pray for you guys. Amen. Praise God. I don't know if you know the Sabedra family. It's a big family here in Chino Hills, so we're just going to cover them with prayer this morning, amen. And if you could extend your hands out, and we're just going to pray. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus, God. And Lord, I lift up the Sabedra family, God. 
I pray, God, that in this season in their life, Lord, that you would just bring comfort, God. For your word says that you are close to the brokenhearted. And I ask, God, that you would just fill them with your grace, your love, your mercy, God. I pray, God, that you would just settle their hearts. And, Lord, uh, let everything be done, God, for your glory and your honor, God, in their life. Father, I pray, God, that you just move on them. Move on them, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Move in them, God. Move in them, move in them. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Come on, church, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray a little bit, let's pray. We just got to put a covering over them, a covering over them. Come on, let's pray, let's pray. Pray God's comfort, God's strength. Just pray that God will just be with them in this season in their life. Oh, Rabarika, Randa, 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 Randa. Oh, my God, 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 my God. Oh, no, 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 Tatayanda. Yes, oh God, yes, oh God. Cover them, Lord, cover them, cover them with your love, with your mercy. With your grace, oh God, cover them, Lord, cover them, my God. Lord, I pray, God. Oh, Rabaranda, Randa, Raranda. Oh, come on, come on, church, a little bit more, a little longer, a little longer. Come on, come on. Oh, Rabarika. Oh, Rabarika, Tayanda, Randa, Raranda. Oh, God, oh, God. Move in them, God. Move. Continue to keep the, the whole Sabedra family in prayer as they are in this season where the, the loss of a loved one is really, really, it's something that everybody is going to experience before, you know. If you haven't experienced it, there's some, all of us are going to experience it. We've got, they need prayer, they need prayer. We know that Eddie's with the Lord, he's in the presence of God, but just keep the family in prayer, amen. Amen, thank you guys. Come on. Oh, Rabarika. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Man, I don't know about you, but I felt the Lord just so close to all of them. All of them. And uh, it, it could have just turned into a prayer service right now, man. I just felt it. But get your Bibles and go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> and yesterday we had our uh, uh, celebration of life service for uh, Pastor Freddy Dominguez. <clears throat> and it was right here. And uh, it was a great time. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that, that we had yesterday. I lost my voice. I wonder where it's at. Hello. <coughs> where did it go? Okay, there it is. <coughs> and we had the celebration service here yesterday, and it was a powerful time that we had. Freddie was the second church that we sent out. Freddie and Margo, and they're, they're the ones that pioneered the, our living word in Modesto, 
where we have uh, Pastor um, Sam at now. And so yesterday we had the services for them. And it was, it was a good good celebration service. We know that Freddie's with the Lord. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> and I'm going to be reading verse 57 and 58. Thank you, Andrew. The Bible says, but, but thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Be ye steadfast, unmovable. Be ye steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Right here we find Paul encouraging the church that was the laborers in the church of, of Corinth. And he was just reminding them that, that God had a purpose for their life. That there was a call on their life. and that There was a, an assignment that God had given the church. And, and it, it required labor, that they were laboring, and they were laboring in the vineyards, they were laboring, and the Bible even said that they began to reap a harvest that they didn't even plant, that God just gave increase in their life. And God began to build the church there in Corinth. Kind of reminds us of where we're at right now. God is building the church. God is bringing in people. God, people are rising up, amen. You could feel the hunger and the in the heart of our church right now, we're in revival. Can I hear an amen, somebody? We are in revival. I mean, we're, man, we're busting out of this building. We don't know what to do, but we're praying, man. Either give a, get another building or we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to raise the roof. Hello, somebody. But, and I'm down for whatever, but we are in that place. But then what he, done, what he did, what he reminded them to be steadfast and unmovable. And I really believe that that's where we're at right now as God is adding on to the church and the church is growing. And not only are we getting uh, new converts and stuff like that, but it's a different breed. That when you guys are coming, all the new people, you're coming in and you're just so hungry for God. You just want all, man. And I could feel it. You could feel it. It's not like it used to be. Somebody will get saved and, and then, you know, they won't show up the next service. Nowadays, you're getting saved and you want to find out what's happening during the week. You want to find out what's going on. And, you know, you want more. You want more. Man, there, there's like something ignited in your spirit. Uh, like you really came alive. Can I hear an amen, somebody? You don't need to be in encouraged. You don't need to be pepped up or picked up. Uh, Jesus already begun to work within your life. Uh, and you can feel it and it's genuine. That's revival. That's revival. That's the stream that is happening now, right now in our church. Uh, if you're not there, jump in the stream. Get in the water. Get in the water. The, the water represents the flow of the Holy Spirit. Get in the water. So Paul was encouraging the church to be steadfast and unmovable. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Being steadfast and un unmovable. Having a steadfast and unmovable mindset. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything that you're going to do today, God. I pray that you would move by the power of your spirit. I pray, God, that today, Lord, uh, strongholds in our mind would come down, my God. I pray, God, that you would liberate every heart, every mind in this place, God. That you would expose every deceiving word that the enemy would try to manipulate in our mind God to distract us or try to destroy us God I pray God that this morning God that you would be lifted up in this place you would be lifted up in our mind my God highly exalted God above everything else Father I thank you for what you're going to do today God have your way this morning in Jesus name we pray amen and amen come on somebody give the Lord a hand clap and then you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. How many enjoyed the worship that we had this morning? My God. Awesome presence of the Lord. The Holy Ghost is in the house. This morning I want to speak on being steadfast and unmovable. And I want to focus on our mind that needs to be steadfast and unmovable. When you think of that word steadfast, as Paul wrote to the church of Corinth, 
It has several meanings, but the, the meat of it on being steadfast is it describes something that is strong, unbendable, unbreakable, and permanent. It reminds me of, of, of like a strong column that upholds the, 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 the structure of a roof. It upholds it and it provides a covering. How many know you got to have pillars that are in the house of God that are upholding a spiritual covering of what God is doing? And those are the ones that are steadfast, that are unmovable. They're in it to win it. They're, in, they're, they're remaining in God. They're, they're not in and out. They have a steady course in their life. Uh, they, they know where they're going. They know what they're doing. They know what God desires of them, and they're yielding to God's plan and, 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 and purpose for their life every day. Because every day you got to do that. Every day you got to do that. So being steadfast is being basically unbendable, unbreakable, and permanent. Unbendable. And when you think about unmovable, unmovable means that something that is not capable of being moved from one place to another. Something that's unmovable is something, something that has been planted, that you have made a decision in your heart that, that it's God's way. And, and it's only one way that's his way. That, that, that you're in it because uh, you want to make it to the end. That you're in it. There's no plan B. There's no plan C. There's no plan D. Uh, you know, there's no plan Z. Hello, somebody. Uh, there, there's no other way. It's just one way. And you have set your heart in that direction. And then whatever may come your way that would try to divert you or, or, or kind of distract you, it, it doesn't get the best of you. It'll come. Uh, yeah, it might catch you for a moment if your guard is down, but then right away you quicken yourself and you realign yourself back to what God has for your life. Because that's what life is in serving the Lord. It's not walking a straight line. Uh, even though you desire that, but then you get deceived, you get hit sometimes, uh, and sometimes you have your guard down and you get ensnared a little bit, and you begin to go a little bit left or a little bit right. But how many thank God for the Holy Ghost that quickens you and the Word of God that comes alive and says, no, you need, to, you need to get back in line to what God has for our life. And I don't know about you, but that's the way the Lord does me. Well, we got to be unmovable. We got to be unmovable. We, we got to, and, and the only way you could be unmovable is you need to be committed. You need to make a sure foundation uh, a decision that this is what I want. Uh, you know, not only on Sunday, not only on Wednesday, but from Monday through Saturday or through Sunday, 24-7, 365 days a year, and including leap year. Everybody wants to get weird on leap year. Well, I didn't commit myself to that. I said 365, so that extra day is for me. No, don't get weird on that leap year, because then you start leaping around like a little frog, wondering where you belong. We got to understand to be unmovable is to have your heart in the right place, to, to, to seek the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, to seek what God has for your life. That's the best thing that you can do in a way to spend your life on this earth because it goes fast. The Bible describes it that our life on this earth is like a vapor. We're here today and gone tomorrow. And everybody doesn't know the day that the Lord's going to come for them, but believe me, it's there. It's written in the Word that, that, that everybody, there's been a, an appointed day to die. It doesn't say after you reach a certain age, there's an appointed day. So if you understand that, then you got to live each day like this is your last day. And, and you got to serve God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. Unmovable, steadfast and unmovable. Why is it so very important for us to be steadfast and unmovable within our mind? Because we got to be careful what we think because our life is shaped by our thoughts. Proverbs 23, 7 says it like this. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you think within your heart, their heart meant mind. So how you think in your mind, if your mind is double-minded and you're not steadfast and you're so easily swayed, uh, then that's who you're going to be. It's going to be a reflection in your life. You're going to be in and out. So you got to settle things in your mind. And you can do it. The Bible talks about the mindset all through the scriptures from the Old Testament 
to the New Testament. It, it, it describes certain mindsets that people have that, that really don't benefit from life. As a matter of fact, because of their mindset, it takes them on a detour, in, uh, usually a, down a road of pain or a road of trouble. But you find one in James 1.8 says, such a person is double-minded and unstable in all, their, all they do. James describes a mindset that is double-minded. Double-minded is making one decision today, and then uh, by tomorrow, you're making a different decision. But I believe some of us could be even more drastic on that. You make a decision right now, and in 10 minutes, you're doing, wanting something else. Such a person is un, a double-minded, and a double-minded person is very unstable. And, and, and that's totally opposite of being unmovable and steadfast. Is when you have a double-minded, and usually people that have double-minded don't make up their mind. You, you can't make up your mind, and, and you're there, and you, you want God, but, but then your flesh begins to tell you, you know, what about, uh, you know, what about uh, you know, that, 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 that cute guy that's over there? You know, that's what I want. And I'm talking about somebody from the men's home. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Nowadays, you got to add everything in your sermons, Amen. <clears throat> or you're double-minded. You want God, but then all, I want God on Sunday, and then Monday uh, I want you know that that you know that person or that thing, or I want to pursue that. Double-minded. You need to make your mind up. You need to close the door of double-mindedness because you're very unstable. Your life is very unstable. The, probably the uh, product of that in your mind is that you're double-minded. You're not certain of what you want. You haven't decided that you want Jesus and, and you want to live for him. You haven't decided to lose your life, uh, to find it in Christ Jesus. And then all, all the way in Genesis 41 verse 8, the Bible records here in the morning, his mind was troubled. Then you got a troubled mindset. There's people that have troubled mind. A troubled mind is an unsettled mind. A troubled mind is a mind that is in conflict. A, a, a troubled mind is, uh, uh, when you have a troubled mind, then you like to be around people that cause trouble. That's why you hooked up with that guy. Hello, somebody. Because he caused trouble, but you have a troubled mind, so it just mats right in like a, the perfect shoe for your life. Mind was trouble. When you have trouble, it's because there's no peace. When you have trouble, it's when there's a war. It's a war going on in your mind. There's a war going on in your mind. And, and so when you have a mind that is full of trouble, there, there's not going to be no rest. Uh, you're not going to gain anything. Uh, a troubled mind produces a troubled life, a troubled life. And, and all the troubles that, uh, and then you sing that song, whoa, nobody knows all the troubles I've seen, you know. <laughs> And you start playing that song, it, it woes me, woes me, it's just me. Uh, people usually with a troubled mind, they never have anything good to say on their tongue. It's all trouble. How are you doing today? Well, I'm glad you asked. You know, I, when I woke up, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I stepped on some glass. I broke my toe. I hit the counter. I just got so much trouble in my life. Well, I'll go in the men's home. Hello, somebody. <clears throat> so you got a troubled mindset. Then also in... Deuteronomy 26, I mean 28, 65, the Bible says, there the Lord will give you an anxious mind. It talks about an anxious mind. An anxious mind reminds me of a, a mind that, that is full of fear because being anxious is, uh, that's how come we get anxiety. We get anxiety. We have no patience. There's no patience there. And, and fear comes in. Uh, and, and because things ain't happening right now, uh, uh, you know, you get fearful very quickly, an anxious mind, or an uh, unsettled mind, an uh, anxious mind, and, and that, that will take you in, in, into a really spin in life, and that you would really make some bad decisions. People that have an anxious mindset are people that are just trying to get a quick fix now to make me feel good now. I just got to be settled in my mind. I'm so anxious. There's, uh, it's turning into anxiety. Uh, and, and, you know, and there's a lot of fears, uh, self-fears that are there. And, and, and it's very, very uh, 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 traumatizing. It's very uh, painful to experience that because there's so much affliction in the mind because uh, 
there's anxious and you're, you're, you're in a hurry, you can't sleep. People with an anxious mindset, you can't sleep and, and there's no peace in your mind. Oh, it's getting quiet in this anxious church. <laughs> and then in Psalms 119 verse 113, it talks about a double-mindedness and it talks about uh, how the Lord feels towards like that. He says, I hate double-minded people, but I love your law. Double-minded people, because double-minded people are, can be two-faced. You, you ever know any two-faces? Okay, uh, you know, you're one way one day, and the next day, who in the heck are you? I thought, you know, I thought we were good, and, and now you're mad-dogging me. Hello. Now you don't want to share your tacos with me. And yesterday you were giving them, trying to give them to me. <laughs> Double-minded. Then also in Proverbs 12, 8, the Bible talks about another kind of mindset. And the Bible says, and one with a warped mind is despised. Then you just have a warped mind. A warped mind does, has no truth in it. A warped mind is something that just believes on whatever they feel. Usually the warped mind is... a. Uh, it's just warp. It, it, there's no structure to it. It, it. It's just existing, and it believes whatever it wants to at that time, uh, considering how it feels and, 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 and the environment and who's around. It's a warp mind. There's no stability to it. A warp mind reminds me of a, uh, you, know, a, a, you know the way your car used to go with your tires going like this and you know almost falling off. They're, they're a warp, and, and it's a rough ride when you have warp. How many ever have a warp tire? Okay, all right, now we're confessing, okay. <laughs> How many still have a warped tire? No, I'm just playing. But you know, when you have a warped tire, you just got that little shaking. You're in the car, and the car, hey, you like my car? Yeah, it's, hey, I'm getting a massage. You got a massager in here? No, it's just that little tire, boom, boom. And you got to go get it. What do you have to do? Go get it balanced. It needs to be, it's unbalanced. And usually warped people are unbalanced. And, and it just keeps moving, and, and you're in the car, and you know, thinking you're cruising, and, and, and you know, and then when you, even when you get out of the car and you're walking, you're still shaking. <laughs> People put a, a shake in your hand, you start shaking it for them. <laughs> a warped mind. A warped mind is a mind that, that, that it, 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 it's not, uh, uh, that's not settled. A warped mind is, uh, you know, it needs balance. There's no balance. It reminds me of warped people that are warped, that they'll come in the church and they'll go to the extreme. Okay, I'm gonna, I want God, and this and that, and I want God, and they're excited, and, 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 and they're feeling it, and, and, but, they're, but then, then the next day, ah, I just, I, I just want to die, I just want to die. And then they come in, oh, God is, you know, back and forth, back and forth. No balance, no balance. They have no balance. You need to have balance if you want to move in the things of God. And you can't do it with a warped mind. A warped mind is really tied into your emotions and your feelings. Because your emotions or feelings are warped, then your mind is warped because your mind is listening to your feelings and your emotions. Don't ever trust your feelings and emotions. You know, because that's who got you in trouble. Uh-huh. You want to be mad at somebody? Be mad at your feelings and emotions. Say, I'm sick and tired of you telling me, I, I feel, I feel, I feel. Well, it's not about feelings. We walk by faith and not by sight. I don't walk by feelings no more. I have to get up and tell myself, get up. You know, I, I get mad at myself. Sometimes I get my, get up, get over there. Yeah, because I don't always feel like going to church. I didn't feel like going to church today. Manuel liked that one. <laughs> How Manuel? I didn't feel like going to church. And then Isaiah, Isaiah is, is another one, which is we're going to get ready to get in what I want to talk about. Uh, Isaiah 44, 18, the Bible says, and their minds were closed so they could not understand. Th this is one that really, really holds back the people of God from obtaining all that God has for their life. This really holds back the development of your, your care, inner character. It, this one holds back your spiritual maturity. You'll never grow up. It's because your mind is closed. 
Your, there's a closed mind. There's people here this morning, you have a closed mind. I mean, you're going to sit here, thank God that you're here, praise the Lord, uh, that, that you're here, but you're, you're going to be here, and you're going to, ex, ex, you could experience worship in the Word of God, and the altar call, and all that, and get the full benefit of being here, but you have a closed mind, so you don't engage in anything. You're just here, and you're closed. The sign says closed. Oh, out to lunch. Be back soon. It's closed mind. I've known people that have been in the church for a few years, and, and, uh, and you know, you look at them, and, and uh, um, you think that they're at a different place, but they're not because they're not receiving what God is trying to feed them or what God is trying to do in them because their mind is closed. And it says because they cannot understand. The people that have a closed mind, they always say, I just don't understand. I don't understand that. I don't understand what he's saying. I don't know what, I don't understand how come they have to sing those songs. I don't understand how come uh, that little drummer girl has to beat on them drums so hard, them <laughs> poor drums. She's so little, but she's mighty back there. I, uh, that's my daughter, amen. I don't understand why they have it so loud. Because if we didn't, you would be asleep. And then you really don't understand. I don't understand why I go to sleep all the time in there. I don't under, understand why this or why that. And because when you start telling yourself, I don't understand, your mind is being closed. And you settle for that. I just don't understand. I don't understand, uh, uh, you know, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I don't understand how come they speak in tongues. I don't understand. I don't understand why they got to pay tithe. I don't understand. And I don't understand. It's all closed. And that's a mindset. And that's why you don't grow. That's why you don't mature. That's why you, there's no transformation in your life. That's why there's no, uh, you're not changing. Because you're looking more for understanding. And then when people have that question, I don't understand, and then they find out somebody will explain it to them, then they say, oh, no, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. Believe in what? I don't, I don't believe. I don't believe in bringing a Bible. Because man written it. Just weird stuff. That's a closed mind. That's a closed mind. And you only allow in what you feel, back to your feelings, or through your logic or your understanding. Because if you don't understand it, nah, then you just remain on your own understanding. And the Bible talks about that. It's Proverbs 3, 5. That we are not to lean on our own understanding, but then all our ways acknowledge God. and He will give us the direction we need. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Come on, somebody. Thank God we ain't leaning on, on their, our own understanding no more. Leaning. You can tell those that are leaning on their own understanding. When they get up and they start walking, they're like this. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> so everybody's going to walk straight now, Mom. I'm not leaning no more. I used to lean. <clears throat> and then the last one, and, and this is the one that will bring steadfastness within our mind. Isaiah 26, 3. It says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. A mind that is in perfect peace and steadfast is because with your mind, you trust in God. You trust in God. You just got to trust in God. We don't need to understand everything. We just need to trust God. We need to trust God in his word. We need to trust God uh, through his Holy Spirit that he has put within us and deposited in our, our life. We need to trust God. Because a lot of times when we don't trust God, that's when we open up our mind to other things. And then you don't have no peace and then you're continuing to search. But if you trust God and your mind is on him because your trust is in him, then you get peace and then with peace comes understanding. 
And then you're going to find out when you trust God, there's things that you're not going to understand, and, 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 and it doesn't matter. There's a lot of things I don't understand. All I'd say, it's written in the Word, and the Word of God is God, and God written it. I, if I understand it, I apply If I don't understand it, I guess it's not for me in that season. But I don't, that doesn't mean I don't believe it, but I, I, I try to work it in as God leads me by His Spirit. Okay, very quickly, how do we develop a mindset, an unmovable mindset? Number one, we need to have a willing mind. Everybody say willing mind. This is kind of turning into a, like a teaching. Uh, is, is it, you okay with this? You guys look. I know people that like the preaching. That's good, but it's going to might come right now. But this is what we got right now. How do we develop an unmovable mindset? You've got to have a willing mind. In 1 Chronicles 28, 9, it says, And you, my son Solomon, this is David talking to his son Solomon, he's trying to leave him an inheritance. And it wasn't the wealth that he had. He was leaving him some godly wisdom, some godly counsel. And he tells, and you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. A willing mind. Your mind needs to be willing to yield to God. And, and so he says... And serve him wholehearted, with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. Why do you need a willing mind? Because it's with our mind we serve the Lord. That's why it's so important that our mind needs to be in the right place. That our mind needs to come out of uh, captivity, come out of bondage, how the enemy held us captive when we have strongholds in our mind. We need to be delivered out of that. If you want to serve God, if you want to do what God's called you to do, you got to be liberated in the spirit of your mind. You need to be freed in your mind. And the enemy knows that. That's why the devil worked on us so good when we weren't in God and we were in the world. He put so many strongholds uh, in our mind. Uh, and all them strongholds just represent limitations uh, of telling you what you can't do, that you can't do this, uh, you can't do that, and you can't do this. And, and what he does, he imprisons us in our mind. There's some people that done time in prison but never been in a state penitentiary. I'm talking about the prison of your mind. And, and, and the one that holds the key to the door of the prison in your mind is you. You lock yourself in there and you think, oh, more, poor me, I'm locked in here, I can do nothing, I'm just suffering over here. No, you have the key, it's in your pocket. It's called the key, which is your will. It's your will, uh, with your will that God given you the ability, like I was talking about last week, having the ability to choose. I need to get out of here. I'm sick and tired of this mindset. Uh, I'm sick and tired of being bound uh, and being limited in my mind when we serve a God that is unlimited. Get that unwilling key that you have in your pocket and be willing to get out of there. Many times we don't want to do that because we're comfortable in our limitations. Because you don't have to do nothing. You don't have to work on anything. You could just stay there and have your little pity party. You dress up your little uh, a mind uh, a cell right there. And I'm going to have a pity party and get all your pity party decorations and stuff like that. And I'm just going to have a little pity. You're going to sit there all by yourself in your little pity party. Well, life goes on with everybody else, and I'm just going to be mad at them, and I'm going to be mad at them, and I'm, going to, I'm not inviting nobody to my pity party. I'm just going to stay here. And you think you're hurting everybody, and while everybody else is having a good time, uh, and you keep yourself locked in uh, with unforgiveness, with misery in your spirit, uh, with bitterness and angry, and you're angry, you're an angry little elf in there. Hello, somebody. Because you got a little cage. You're just angry and mad at the world. When you have the ability, you have the key to get out of it by being willing. When I came to the Lord, I had layers upon layers upon layers of, 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 of generational curses and, and strongholds in my mind. I, I was so bound. I, man, I, I was so timid and so bound uh, because of all the things that the enemy put in my mind. Uh, oh, but when Jesus liberated my mind uh, and he freed me out of that place. Uh, and the reason why he pulled me out... 
because I called upon him. I said, God, get me out of this place. I'm sick and tired of thinking of a life this way, of this lens that I'm looking at. I need a change in my thinking. My thinking was stinking. I was sick and tired of everything that I had been uh, you know, accustomed to it, and everything, how the enemy had me bound and with chains in my mind and I couldn't move anywhere. I thought I couldn't even hold down a job. Uh, I thought I wasn't even worthy to, to, to be, you know, to, to do anything. Every time, even when I went to Disneyland, I didn't feel right. <laughs> they probably thought I'd work there. I was the janitor. Hello, somebody. It's supposed to be the happiest place on earth. No. It was a lie. <laughs> it's a lie now. Anyway, why did I say that? What, 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 okay. A willing mind. A willing mind. That was a, a Mickey Mouse demon right now that came over. <laughs> yeah, you're the little dog too, you know. Hey, I'm my news. <laughs> okay, we, it begins with a willing mind. You need to be willing. And really, when you're really willing and, and you're being sincere about it, it's because you're tired. You're tired. You're sick and tired of everything that's happening. You're sick and tired of the way you feel. You're sick and tired of the condition of your mind. And you can't fix it. You can't fix it on your own. So then you come to a place of surrenderance. And the only thing that you surrender is the willingness of your mind. And when you begin to do that, then things begin to happen. Then what happens after that? Now God is able to transform your mind. The Bible says in Romans 12.1, I'm going to have my wife come on up. The Bible says in Romans 12.1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So now that you surrender your mind and you're willing to do what God calls you, call you to do, you're willing to allow God into every avenue of your mind and you surrendered it because you're tired and now you're willing then God will begin to transform your mind he'll give you the tools you need and the purpose for it is so you could understand God's acceptable and perfect will for your life see God will begin to transform your mind so you can live for him See, in these first verses that we just read will show you that God is really wanting to come after your mind. It's your mind. Because like I said earlier, it's with our mind we serve God. And part of your mind is your thought process, what you choose to think about and dwell on. That's your mind. That, that's what you think on it and your thought process and, and how you make decisions, the thought process on those things. That's what God is really after. Because if he could change your mind, he could change your life. He could change the direction of your life. Because it's our mind, where you're at today, is a direct result of the way you've been thinking. And God understands that. God wired us. and God made us. And God knows everything about us. So God is there to renew your mind. Get your mind right. Why? Because it's your head. The head is always forward. Wherever your mind is at, your head is at, that's the direction you're going. That's the direction. If I put my direction, focus this side and my mind focused over here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go that way. If my mind is focused this way, if my mind is focused on God, if my mind is, my thoughts are on Him and, and I allow Him to transform me, to, to, to conform me to what God wants me to be, then I'm, I'll go in that direction. I'll go in the direction that God has for my life. It sets the course. Your mind sets the course to where you're going. Uh, if your mind's still in the world uh, and you're here and, and this morning, I, I believe and I hope that God's going to 
change your mind this morning that your will will be transferred from the the still the the worldliness of the world and the desires and the appetites of the world uh, and you will get your will and put it on the kingdom of God and what God has for your life uh, and God's purpose and God's plan uh, and God's destiny and the acceptable plan that God has so much for you God wants to do it, but you got to cooperate. You got to set your mind uh, in the right place. Why people don't have transformation of their mind? uh, Because their mind is ensnared with something else. Uh, You're looking for pleasures of the world, thinking that that's going to make you happy. You're looking at comfort from the world, thinking that it's going to come from some man, some woman, uh, or some uh, amount of money, uh, or or, or some material thing uh, that has ensnared your mind, thinking that if I just gain these things, uh, I'll be all right in my mind will be happy no it won't it won't be happy there's nothing in this world uh, that can bring satisfaction uh, that will be able to transform your mind uh, the way that Jesus does Uh, if you set your mind on him uh, and him alone say God here it is Uh, here's my mind Uh, I need a good brainwashing because my mind is filthy my mind is perverted Uh, it's all jacked up Uh, there's no good thing in there Uh, so you lay down your mind in the presence of God and you offer your mind as a living sacrifice Uh, I'm bringing it to the altar Uh, I'm laying my mind down as a living sacrifice God Uh, my mind needs to get saved Uh, my mind needs to be cleansed Uh, my mind needs to be purified Uh, my mind is polluted Uh, my mind easily drifts Uh, easily distracted Uh, my mind is so negative I I want new things in my mind That's what you got to bring. When you're sincere and what renewing your mind, if you get your mind right, you get your life right. You get your mind moving in the right direction, then your life begins to move in the right direction. Some of us been in the in the church for years and you haven't got your mind right yet because you're not going in the right direction. You're not going in the right direction because your head Your mind is not on God. Praise God you're here. But you got to have your mind on God from the very moment you wake up to when you rest your head on your pillow at night. God has to be on your mind. He needs to be real. When you first wake up, you got to know He's there. Thank you, Lord, for another day for waking me up. Then you get into prayer because you acknowledge God is there. You acknowledge His presence in your life. You acknowledge the Holy Spirit that is living in you. And then you go have fellowship with Him. Why? Because He's the one that's going to renew your mind. He's the one that's going to loosen the curses off of your life. He's the one that's going to bring the blessing. Uh, He's the one that's going to liberate your mind and then He's going to transform it. You put Him first. And then after that, then you move in life and and as you, because you set your heart on Him, now your mind is full of peace. And now you can make the right decisions. You're not deceived. You're not moving out of feelings. You're not moving out of desperation. Uh, you're not moving out of want. Because uh, God gave you all your needs in prayer, man. Everything you need in here, it feels good to have everything you need in here. Uh, then really, you don't need anything out here. Uh, I can, uh, Like Paul said, I learned the secret of, of being content when I have a lot. And when I ain't got nothing, uh, I've learned the secret uh, because it's all about having Jesus in your life, uh, being filled with Him. Uh, and if you've got Jesus in your life, uh, then you're not in need. And, and then when God blesses you, it, it's like the, the, the icing on the cake. But you can make it. We can make it without the icing, without God, the blessing, because the real blessing is in here. The real blessing is in here. When you have Jesus in here and in here, no devil can talk you out. No devil can. There's nothing he can do to try to sway you or or try to get you to trip or try to get you back into the world or or try to get you back to the connection or try to get you back to your worldly ways. You're able to say, devil, you're a liar. I've come too far to stop now. My God is good. And if God being good to me, I want to be good for him. And it's Jesus that died for my sins. Therefore, I will live for him. 
able to make a stand uh, when all hell's coming against you. Uh, oh my God, when things are going sideways, uh, you're not going sideways. Uh, you're standing strong, unmovable, steadfast. Why? Because the storm is not in you. It might be all around you, uh, but it's not in your mind. It's not in your heart because you got the peace of God in your mind. And you're not tripping. You're not getting weird. And you're able to make your course. You're able to stay focused. Though all hell will be breaking loose around you. You're not moved. Because you got Jesus. And you got peace in your mind. And you got his love in your heart. And you're not moved. And you just keep moving. You just keep moving. You just keep moving. And everybody's running around you. All the chicken Georges. The sky's falling. The sky's falling. The sky's falling. Well, let it fall. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to sway. I'm not going to change who I am in God. God is able to transform your mind as we all stand to our feet. I really believe that right now, in this season we're living in and the time we're living in, we're getting ready to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ next Sunday, Easter Sunday. And I really believe that God is stirring up the church. I'm getting stirred. There's something happening in me. That, that there's more that God has for us. I could feel it. And I could feel, I can feel the enemy. Oh yeah, I feel him. I could feel him. Trying to, and he's trying to hit my mind. He's trying to hit my mind. But the Bible says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Can I hear an amen? I believe that this morning, that the heart of this message this morning is for us to strive for, to be steadfast and unmovable in our mindset. And that we could remain in him so we could obtain all that God has for our life. And the way that we got to do it is we got to have a willing mind. And we need to, the only way that you have a willing mind is a surrendered mind. A willing mind is a surrendered mind. That you need to surrender your mind. It said there in Romans chapter 12 that we are to bring our body as a living sacrifice. Our mind is part of our body. And it's as a matter of fact, it's our mind that leads our body. So when he said bring your body and lay it down on the altar as a living sacrifice. What he said, make the decision in your mind, get your body up there, and pour it out. Lord, I'm sacrificing this body, this mind. I'm laying it on the altar. I'm surrendering it, because a sacrifice is something you're surrendering. You're giving, you're giving. I'm surrendering in that. And when you do that in exchange, because the altar is a place of exchange. Back in the Old Testament, they used to bring the sins of the people of the nation. And in exchange for that, there was forgiveness. There was grace given. And God's judgment came off of the people. People brought their sin. God gave them grace. God lifted the judgment. The altar is the same thing today. But now God does it. Back then, they used to do animal sacrifice, dead sacrifices where there was blood. Today God wants living sacrifices. Living sacrifices. If you're serious about your life, if you're serious about getting your mind right, if you're serious uh, you know, about pursuing what God has for your life, then you would understand the importance of the altar. That you've got to bring and offer your body as a living sacrifice. And the way you get up here it's through your mind. So that's why it's so important. That's why Paul talked about the mind right after he said, offer your body as a living sacrifice. 
and he knew you're going to struggle within your mind right after that and he tells him you need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind that's why you're not doing the love offering your body as a living sacrifice many of us are still stuck in our mindset because you haven't surrendered it to god you haven't laid it at the altar and i believe that this morning this is the perfect time this is a time i believe this time is so pivotal that it's gonna move you in a direction that you really been wanting but you just didn't know how but now you understand now you understand the battle is in the mind it's in the mind and the enemy knows that the devil is a liar the, the devil deceives us in our minds and does all kinds of things that distracts us in our mind but when you have a surrendered mind and a willing mind then you're in God's hands and then your mind is on him and you have peace and then God is able to transform your mind and give you the mind of Christ then when you have the mind of Christ it's the mind that has life and then you have understanding then you're able to understand his perfect pleasing will is that that is so awesome perfect for who for God for us it's for us it's us but you got to start somewhere but right before I open the altar as every head is bowed and every eye closed maybe you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior maybe you're backslidden and maybe your heart is drifted far from God well this morning I really believe that God brought you here because he loves you first of all and but that he wants to get back in relationship with you and maybe this morning your your heart is drifted but God is calling you back and you want to accept Jesus Christ you want to renew your uh, relationship with him to your vows well this is the time or maybe you've never known God before and you don't know him what well, today is the day that I believe that God had made for you that you were going to accept them into your heart and if you're here this morning and you want Jesus and you want to accept Jesus into your heart whether it's for the first time or you want to rededicate your life I want to pray with you very quickly and if you're feeling it this morning that's me that's me I need Jesus I want to ask you very quickly just to raise your hand raise your hand God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you back there anybody else anybody else God bless you right there in the third row. Anybody else, just raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you say, man, I, I need Jesus. I need to get saved. I, I need to be born again. I, I need another opportunity. I need a clean slate. And I want those that raise your hand from the front right here to the back, over there to the back. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. We're going to pray for you guys. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up right here. Just come on up, come on up. This is where everything begins. This is where everything begins. You're yielding your heart to God. You're yielding your life to God. This is where it all begins. It all begins. And if you're here this morning, just open your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. I ask right now that you would forgive me of all my sins. Say, cleanse me, Lord, of all my unrighteousness. Cleanse my mind cleanse my heart and I thank you Lord for making a way for me because this day I accept you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior I surrender to you God let your will be done not mine I thank you for dying on that cross for my sins I believe in your death burial and resurrection and as you resurrect it because of that I have life today in Jesus name let's pray father we thank you Lord hallelujah father I thank you God thank you God father I thank you Lord I thank you God we get a new thing in our mouth new thing God a new thing a new thing spirit of God spirit God, Spirit of God. Move it of God. Touch of God. Oh, go, 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 go. Yes, oh God.
God, oh God. Hallelujah. What I want to do very quickly right now, this is for the church. Maybe your mind, like I said, is still struggling and struggling. You end up doing the things you don't want to do. The things you want to do, those are the things you don't do. You're struggling in your mind with depression. Just a negative mindset, a mind that there's nothing good in there. You're tired of that. I believe that you're sensitive to what God has. God wants to do something in your life right now. But you got to bring your body. Your mind has to bring your body right now. You need to make a decision and come to the altar and lay your body down, including your mind, as a living sacrifice. And say, God, here it is, Lord. Here it is. Here's my mind. It's been crazy ever since I remember. It, it, I have a bunch of hurt, a bunch of pain, a bunch of... And if you're here this morning, and that's you, and maybe your mind hasn't been renewed it's still not being transformed and well you got to surrender it you got to lay it on the altar you got to lay it on the altar oh and you got to be willing hey you got to have a willing mind a willing mind come on up come on up just come on up don't leave this place the same way let god loosen them things in your mind uh, let god liberate live, let him liberate your mind hallelujah maybe some ushers could, could come and and move, help the people. Maybe the ushers can come, bring the people around the side, around this side. Oh, Rabba, Rianda, Rianda, Rianda. In the chaos, you are the peace. In my suffering, you're here with me. In the darkness, you never leave. God of mercy, you're walking with me. I surrender anxiety. All the striving, it has to cease. In this moment, you're still the king. This is the gift you are giving to me. Sound mind for the spirit of fear. You 
Come on, church. Give the Lord some praise this morning. Come on. How many received the word this morning? Amen. Amen. Pastor did an awesome job on delivering the word this morning. Man, when you have Jesus in the center of your mind and your heart, you're unmovable. Amen. Amen. You love Jesus this morning? Come on. Give him some praise. We're getting ready to dismiss, but... Don't forget, tomorrow we have a women's Bible study. Come on, how many have been receiving from that women's Bible study? Amen. Also, this Friday we have our, our young adult service and our youth service. Where's all the youth at? Come on, I know you guys have been receiving there also. And uh, why don't we lift up our hands and just pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word, God. For your spirit that's in this house this morning, God. God, for your victory that you've given us this morning, Lord. We thank you so much for the blood that you shed for us, God. I pray, my God, that our mindset, my God, will be on you, my God, and you only, my God. That way we are unmovable throughout the week, my God. We love you so much. We thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Amen. We're all dismissed, church. God bless.